1968 Firebird. So this car is basically a car that had been repainted once. It was green, it's been painted white a long, long time ago. You can see what's going on here, some chipping. There's a lovely green. Nice and clean, mildly built, 350 Pontiac. Oh yeah, it's got some billet pulleys on it and stuff. That's cool. Aluminum radiator. Anyway, there was a rag full of brake fluid that was left here. And the next day, they picked up the rag. This is what brake fluid does to your paint. But that being said, you know, there's chipping all along this edge. There's stone chips up on the hood. And if you look way up on the middle, let's have a look at that. And that's all chipping in there. And they're always chipped across the top here. Well, see, when they're parked for the winter, people like to throw boxes and all kinds of junk on top of their stuff. And that's what happens. Bit of chipping on the door edge. But the paint is really flat. The door gaps are fair. But what isn't really great, go down, the top of the door's out, the bottom's in. We're going to align those to the quarters, align the fenders to suit. This will be slid that way. and So instead of just a cheesy repaint, like what the guys at Mako might do, or you know, a body shop that really doesn't want to take the time to do it, uh, we're going to blow all the panels. Well, we're going to blow some of the panels off the car. Before we blow them off, we're going to make sure that we can set everything up, that everything will sit flat, right? Because uh, body lines and gaps are important. If you go here, the top of the door is out, the bottom is in. The bottom at the front here is about flush, but here it's out. So the whole door's got to twist a bit that way, but then this fender will probably have to come out a bit. That's why we're gonna move that pan over and then the other fender will be slightly rotated to match the other door, which will be slightly rotated to match the rear fender. Fenders don't move. Once they're welded on a car, that's where they go. You gotta line everything else up and it's an original car. It saw some mini quarters down here, or lower quarters, whatever you wanna call them. Uh, one's failing on the other side. There's a little crack in the filler. So we're gonna clean that out and see what's going on. Something going on right here, nobody knows why. It might add a little ding and they just threw some filler in it and it wasn't prepped really well. Again, this is a 25 year old paint job. It's held up well. This car looks like the paint looks good. It's a stunning car. It's bright. It's very, very shiny. Some things were overlooked when they did it the first time. You can see the, uh, the chrome around that one light is kind of all messed up. So when we take the tail lights out, I'll put that on the table, spend a bit of time, we'll straighten that out till it looks good. Paint's cracking between the two tail lights there, so we'll have to sand that out and fix whatever's going on there. But basically we're gonna go over the car, fix all the mistakes, make her smooth. Unlike the cheap repaints, we're uh, gonna take all the chrome, all the stuff off. We even took the interior part so we could get in here to get those off, which was a mistake because we found out you can access those through these little black vents. So we'll have to put the interior panels. Well, we only took one out, so at least we didn't go too far. The nickel across the bottom of the car, we took that off. And I mean, the car's really nice down there. Other than some chips and a couple rust spots on the chips themselves or in the chips, the car's really nice. Now, originally this was a 4.1 overhead cam car. That's the original hood. Now, for some reason, those cars were optioned in a really strange way. For instance, they got these. Those were only available in some Firebirds. I don't know if you had to order them or whatever. 
No console. Shifter on the column. Weird. It does have the 160 mile an hour dash. And then just a big fuel gauge. So luckily he's got all that's down there. But I mean it's tasteful. It's just underneath. And he's got a nice stereo on it. Because he drives it and he listens to the tunes. This is not a show car. This is a driver. And this is where I find people get led astray on, on many cars. So anyway, let, let's go back to the car itself. The car is nice. The chrome is decent. This is just going to be a repaint. But we're going to keep it as high end as we can. So the first thing I want to touch base on is uh, the wheel and tires. The wheels and tires actually look really good on the car. Um, but you'll see that the front is up compared to the back. And this is something to think about when uh, when you bring your old classic to a shop and there's this whole big wheel craze. The bigger the wheel, the better it is and it'll handle good, but there's also the lowering craze. So let me tell you what's been done to this car that is no longer stuck. About 10 or so years ago, this car was lowered with a Hotchkiss suspension. And I think they were running some 15 inch wheels on it at the time. So it was probably like a two inch on the front and an inch, inch and a half on the back with 15 inch rubber. Now these cars came originally with 14s most of the time. But uh, why does it sit like it does? So it was all lowered. And what was happening is at some point the owner decided to go with these wheels. Somebody talked him into, oh yeah, I run them on my Impala and it's amazing. Now when you run it on like a, a big body car, big Buick, big Impala, Chrysler New Yorker 1819 you can kind of get them in there but this was for the width of the rim this was kind of the profile of what you could get away with now Hotchkiss makes a good product but look these wheels and tires are just big so what was happening the front was lower and every time he was driving around especially in the city on the highway you're okay but in the city, what would happen is the front would rub. Every time you went across an intersection, you always got that hump in the middle, the tires would rub. You'd turn a little too sharp, pull off the road into a parking lot, there's a little hump, tires rub. You don't want your tires rubbing on a car like this when you've spent this much money. You know, tires hitting the fender and eating the paint off or whatever it's doing. So what he had to do to correct the front from rubbing so much is he took the Hotchkiss suspension kit out and put a, a Bilstein suspension kit in it, which is adjustable. And to get them to stop rubbing, where you see it is as high as he had to adjust them up, not to rub. So now what happens is the front don't rub, the car's sagging a bit at the back, and because he transferred the weight this way, look, for drag racing, this is awesome, but now the back rubs. So what's going to happen is it's going to have to uh, lift the back up. And uh, he's going to have to go a good inch and a half. Now if you look at the height of this car, it ain't exactly low. In fact, I work on a lot of these. And I'm pretty sure that even now before lifting the back, this car is already higher than stock. So if you're lowering, lowering your car because you want it to be lower and handle better, but then you're gonna go crazy with the wheels and tires and pick it back up, all you have done is lost a lot of the room in your suspension. Now you stiffen the hell out of your suspension and run it on a track, that's great. Uh, you know what, 99.9% .9 of the people that own these don't race nothing on a track. He rips around, he cruises with this car, he does some burnouts, he might go to the drag strip once in a blue moon, and I doubt this guy does that, but that's at best what people do with these cars. No one's cutting these up to turn them into race cars, they're, they're finding field turds to do that with, because, you know, these things are valuable now. I mean, some people spend the money anyway, but I suppose that's their thing. But yeah, don't don't get caught up in this weird wheel and tire bullshit. And it is bullshit. I mean, look, yeah, it looks cool, but 
the whole idea of making it low and like there's a happy middle ground you got to find and i think had he run a 17 I mean, a 15 would be great, but he could have ran a 17 and got a little bit tighter of a tire, still just as wide. He wouldn't have had these problems because he could get, you know, a slightly better profile. Now, on the back, he could put a lower profile on. That's not the lowest available. Now, this is the lowest available from what he told me that'll fit these wheels. He could put this tire on the back. The rubbing wouldn't happen. It's just a mess. You've totally... You've totally lost all your suspension so that it would handle nice and low and then you raised it back up like this did this doesn't make sense so don't do this the car came in and it wasn't reliable so let's go on to the next issue with this car which is why I'm starting it a couple weeks later than I wanted to which is great because I had to get caught up on other things he brought this into a few shops and they told him, well, we tested everything, we've gone through everything, everything is good. Sometimes it wants to start, sometimes it doesn't want to, and nobody knows why. Um, look, go to the obvious. It always needs to be charged up and then all of a sudden it's good. Maybe, just maybe, it's the battery. Now, he had a battery that was, I don't know, he said something about, well, it's not that old, it's been tested. Look, it. Uh, we pulled it out, we put this shitty little old battery out of some wreck in here. This car fires up like a fuel-injected car. You give it a little touch of gas, away she goes. And I mean, it don't turn over and over and over. It literally, you give it one little shot to kick your choke, whatever, on. Touch that key, it fires right up. This car is as reliable as it gets. So people say, well, they're just old. Yeah, you got a shitty mechanic, go somewhere else. For real. Find, find good mechanics. Um, and going in the phone book and calling around is probably not the best thing to do. Go down to a couple car shows and car meets, talk to the guys that have similar stuff to yours and find out where they're getting stuff done. Um, that, that's the only way you're going to find somebody good in your area. Because they were trying to tell them, you know, the best thing to do. And, and this is this is where it gets weird to me. Uh, he's brought this to a couple shops down in the Toronto area and they all basically said, you should LS swap it so that it will be reliable and and when he brought me this car he goes you know would you guys be interested in an ls swap i said well what's wrong with the 350 that's in it now i know where he bought this car and i know who did the engine work well i know the guy that knows the guy that did look it was done at a reputable place there's nothing wrong with this engine this is an awesome powertrain as soon as i heard what he was telling me i'm like i think they don't know what they're talking about and like i say i thought well we'll go through it let, let us figure it out and i'm no mechanic but i know these old cars pretty good and I got a few buddies that know them way better than I do. And quite frankly, I changed the battery. It's all good. Now, the other thing that was happening, uh, there was a bit of brake fluid down around there. Turns out it was leaking out of the gasket in the lid. It was like 20 bucks for a gasket. I ordered a new one, put it in, made sure everything was clean. No longer leaks. I like to go over the cars for leaks because I don't want uh, oils shooting out when you're driving it and the paint is fresh. Now, everyone thought that the brake was leaking a lot because the steering box was soaking wet, but it turned out it was seeping because someone redid all the brakes. Same guy who did that mess on the fender over there, um, which, which was an accident. But I guess when they put the lid back on, when they were done whatever they were doing, it didn't quite seat right, so it was no big deal. New gasket, cleaned up all the dirt and junk under the lid. It seals good, nothing leaks now. But what we did find out one power steering hose has some rubs in it, but it didn't leak. But the return line is leaking down there, and that's what we were seeing all over the box. So, we're going to put new lines in. The engine, the oil pan, there's a bit of seepage. No significant leaking, nothing to worry about. Um, so we're going to go through all that. So we thought we'd have to look at this and take it to a shop, do a bunch of stuff, then do the body work. It turns out a battery and some basic maintenance. Just use your head. Um, anyway, that seems to be a thing these days where you can't get these mechanics to do carburetor work. I, I don't get it, but I got a lot of customers. And in this last year, that seems to be a thing. What a good looking car. Now, the only thing we're going to change up on the car, other than a repaint, it no longer has that uh, twin cam four point whatever six cylinder. But 
we got the 400 Pontiac hood, which showed up white. It's got a couple little dings. Uh, excuse me, a couple little dings. We're going to fix those. Same deal, right? Wherever this was stored, something rubbed it right in the same place as his car. Um, but anyway, we're going to clean that up and paint it. That's going to go on the car. And with the scoops, it'll look really good. In the case of this car, um, the one thing that isn't original on this car is it has what I believe, and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that the spoiler, somebody put that on there, that's off of a Camaro. The Firebird, I believe, had standoffs and a wing. It had the wing style spoiler instead of the, you know, regular spoiler. But it looks good on the car. We're going to keep it that way. With the 400 hood, this is going to look really good. So, again, I've told people, you know, sometimes you can buy a car that's not crazy expensive. And, like, I don't know what you'd get a, this particular car for, but you could probably find a, an old car in similar condition. 10, 12 grand. And maybe it's just good enough that you can get away with a repaint. Look, should everything be restored to a super high-end blah, blah, blah TV car? Sure. How much money you got? Imagine buying this for even 15 grand, throwing a $10,000 paint job. You got a $25,000 toy, and we all know these are worth way more than that now. So let's not kid ourselves, right? So I'm sure there'll be haters that aren't going to like this car. Why are you doing a repaint on such a nice car? I'm telling you, this is what comes in the shop, and this is what pays my bills. And when a customer just wants a repaint, they get a repaint. If they just want an old school body job, they get an old school body job. And if they want a complete resto, they're going to get a pretty damn nice car at the end of the day. So this is this is the thing. People have budgets and they get to choose what they want to do. This car is not going to shows. It'll go to local coffee and cars and stuff like that, little car shows. But it's not going to Auto Ram or nothing. We're not trying to win a trophy. I mean, we're rocking the interior in this car uh, as original. So this was a mint green car, and it had this, uh, looks like a tan with a slight tinge of green seat and carpet. But it's all very nice. And with the white, looks great. No sense redoing the whole interior. I mean, look at that driver's seat. I don't know if you can see that. Let me come around. Yeah, she's a little soft, but there's not a rip in it. This is a great driver. You don't have to put a lot of money into it. And you're going to take it out, and you're going to drive it, and you should drive them. I mean, I don't understand these people that hide them away, but anyway, that's the car. That's the next thing we're working on. Uh, we're going to work on that alongside of this guy. I haven't done as much on this as I'd like to because I was trying to play catch up, and we did the 56 Dodge. We did the 69 Sports Satellite. Um, this needed more work than it was supposed to need, so we're going to start working on that. And again, I'm going to fill it all up, clean it up. This is going to be a semi-gloss black on the whole car, so that'll be fun. Anyway, that's what's coming up. Hope it's a good day. Everybody has a great day. I've been working for weeks and weeks on end, so today I'm kind of going to clean up the shop, bring that car in, blow some more of it apart, take all the parts off, and it'll be ready for tomorrow, and tomorrow we'll start getting it ready for uh, for its next paint job. Anyway, cheers.